Hi, I'm Kelly. And I'm Deborah. And together with Two Gals Travel Tips. And we're coming up on St. Patrick's Day, so we are going to plan a trip to Ireland. We are going to plan our, we're going to do two, our two part series. This part is on the Dublin side, which is the eastern part of Ireland, and we're going to stay just outside of the city. Part two will be on the western side of Ireland. Um, so stay tuned for that, that episode. So let's start with our flight, which is usually the most expensive. What did we find for our flight? So our flight was $434 per person from um, Boston on Aer Lingus. It's a direct flight and it includes, of course, a carry-on because it is their budget flight um, and no checked bag. And this is during September? Exactly. So it's our shoulder season. It's the same dates we've been talking about. Um, September 7th through the 14th and um, the weather is still beautiful and it is shoulder season because all the kids have gone back to school. <laughs> and if you are traveling with children, shoulder season again can be any other time except for the high season. So obviously around St. Patrick's Day would be a high season, summer would be a high season, but you can usually uh, get other times of the year that kids are off and Ireland typically has a mild winter. so. Not too bad. Exactly. I've been to Ireland twice. Both times have been in April, and both times I was able to get um, good fares to go. So Ooh, both. Good. How about Airbnb or hotel? So um, staying in the heart of Dublin is expensive. So it's really mm. outside of our budget. So <clears throat> we're going to stay in an Airbnb outside of the city. It is on the higher end of our budget. It's three hundred and fourteen dollars for a two bedroom, two bath with parking. It's about 20 minutes into the city. Um, however, I think that had we planned maybe a little bit earlier, we would have been able to find something maybe a little bit better, but this looks nice and it'd be, uh, it's a great location for us to take our day trips. Wonderful. And getting there, obviously from the airport, we either are taking transportation or we have to decide for all of our activities and what we're doing, whether we're going to rent a car. So. We're renting a car in Ireland. The driving is not for the faint of heart and you have to get the insurance. So um, we're renting a car and our cost is $35 per person for our trip that's with unlimited mileage and the insurance. And we've upgraded to an automatic because the Irish roads, you know, you're already driving on the other side. You don't need another challenge. <laughs> Handling a manual or a stick exactly. transmission. Okay. Uh, and what about anything for like tolls or anything else? Does it come with a transponder for that or do you have to pay per toll? So um, the car rental company provides what's called the e-flow device. So you want to be mm -hmm. sure that when you're renting your car, you ask for the e-flow device. So this would automatically you pay your tolls and then you get a bill at the end of the at the end of the trip for your tolls or it just goes on your credit card. Yeah. And you mentioned about insurance. For those that haven't seen our other videos, talk a little bit about why we would need to purchase the additional insurance, which you typically would never do anywhere you travel, uh, especially in the United States. Right. So when you rent a car, the driver of the car has to use their credit card in order for your credit card to be your insurance for the card. However, Ireland is one of the few countries, because the roads are challenging, that they will not cover you. Your credit card in general, I, I hear there's a couple out there, I don't know which ones, that will cover you. However, you in Ireland, have to take out the insurance. So no, that's an additional cost, even though you're gonna use your credit card and your credit card by and large will cover um, your insurance in different countries, they will not in Ireland in general. You can call and double check um, before, and then again, it's important for the driver to be the one renting their car with their credit card. Great, good information. Our next largest expense is food. So food, so we're gonna to have to tighten our belts a little bit. So we have a budget of $300 for food for this trip. Um, that includes all your little pub stays. So um, 
you know, we'll have to eat breakfast in the room, which is not a big deal, and then a light lunch, and then a dinner. And you can you can get by on that budget in Ireland. Um, if you're eating at, you know, pub style of restaurants, it, you'll be absolutely fine with that budget. Yeah, that's a really good point. And the fact that you're doing your own Airbnb and it's your own like apartment style place, you can get food, make your lunch, take it with you, you know, travel, especially even if you have children, you can get by and then just eat out on, on for your dinner out and about and enjoy the different pubs and restaurants that Ireland has to offer. Right. And many of the day trips are very beautiful, scenic park Esque, mm. so lend themselves nicely to picnic lunches too. Uh, this trip could easily lend itself to three days in Dublin. Two, using the pass to see the activities that are covered in the pass, and then the third day to see um, activities that are free. Mm -hmm. There's four national museums in Dublin. Those are all free of charge, and then things that aren't included in the pass that we may want to see. So easily three days in Dublin and just walking around and seeing the sights and going to the Trinity Bar area, you know, you will not be bored. That's that's a nice time in, in Dublin. Yeah. So we're a $1,500 budget per person. Uh, we named all the larger expenses and then we have some smaller expenses. We've got, if COVID is still an issue, we have right. that built in. Right, so it's $39 for a COVID antigen test. Um, they have CVSs in Ireland and they offer mm. the antigen test, um, but there are many other places easily accessible. Um, and they do say on their websites that they result within the 24 hours that we need. Um, we're also going to put um, $100 um, away for gas and tolls because, you know, the distances are far um, and the roads are narrow and windy. So you tend to spend a lot of time on the road. So I think that's uh, $400 is more than adequate for that. Activities pass. Oh, activities pass. So I did the math and in Dublin, um, for the activities that I chose that I liked when I was in Dublin, it was uh, more beneficial to get the Go Dublin Pass than it was to price it out individually. Mm -hmm. and, and Deb will um, link in the spreadsheet so you can see the math. Okay, so here's the spreadsheet that we talked about that outlines sort of the must-see, must-do activities that we discussed. And here's the cost by euro, here's the cost on the activities pass, and the cost of that, and whether it was beneficial to uh, get the pass or not. We're doing a two-day pass on that. And then we've also included down here the other things that are outside of the pass, but we suggest that you should add them to your itinerary. So overall, you can do something similar, but this is a very rough sketch of what we do to maximize the cost of our travel on your list and then gives you an idea on the airfare on your Airbnb and your car, which are usually your staples, and then you can then figure it out from there. So it sort of gives you a blueprint. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. If you found this helpful, please uh, subscribe, please like, please follow, please share. We will uh, put some resources here at the end, and we really thank you very much for listening. And we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.
seek to be read Taking hold of the moment as we discover Every color filled with wonder Now we finally see We got everything we need Here we go Feel it coming now Here we go